discussions. And I think uh, uh, I, what, oh, I need this to point out uh, clearly what I would suggest uh, to try to focus on. The first question would be then for you to uh, consider discussing what needs, challenges, issues related to language education? You see, uh, and I, you can identify in your own context, what problems, what bothers you, what seems to be something that is still obstructing uh, your work, and uh, where you would see improvements or changes uh, uh, needed uh, in your own context. Or from the perspective of Armenia, if you want to switch to this more general mode. And the second question would be, what areas, topics, you would uh, identify where you would like the center in Graz to initiate and support international cooperation, and where you would uh, see uh, that a proposal could be made from yourself as individuals or from yourself as contributing to a team work on international level. Which topics, areas you would like the center to take up in the next medium-term program? Out, I understand, of those that you have identified for yourself under the first point. Uh, please organize yourself as you wish. Uh, divide uh, the tables, uh, I don't know, uh, probably, as I say, either uh, two groups per row. There's still some spaces left for those sitting and crowding in the back to have a more comfortable uh, conditions. But if you like being crowded and feel warm, it's up to you. Uh, I'll say that uh, we would then start discussing uh, the issues that you raised uh, uh, in uh, half an hour. Uh, so please indicate a rep rapporteur from each of the uh, subgroups that you build. And we then start uh, discussing and listening to each other quarter past 12. We merely singled out uh, one main problem here. Um, and the thing is that we all know that we have already launched a process of computer-based assessment uh, in our university and um, in terms of practical courses, for example, practical phonetics and practical grammar, we know that we actually find new obstacles in implementing and merely realizing this process. Uh, however, uh, if we speak in terms of theoretical courses like uh, cognitive textology or like discourse analysis, something like this, yeah. Uh, some of our professors raise the following uh, question or problem or challenge. Uh, do we consider computer-based testing to be the most efficient tool of assessing students' competences? Because, uh, first of all, um, when we speak about uh, like checking uh, analytical reading, creative thinking, or uh, like critical thinking and writing skills of the students, it's a little bit difficult, uh, like doing it by means of multiple choice, uh, because we ourselves find some difficulty in making the tests. Uh, concerning theoretical materials, uh, theoretical courses in our university, and when the students try to answer, uh, like only ticking something, and you don't check the analytical and creative thinking of the students, it's a little bit difficult, even for the lecture, for the professor in the university. So the main um, question here is, what alternatives can you suggest uh, like besides testing, uh, if we speak in terms of uh, theoretical courses? So this is the main uh, question that when we're trying to discuss these problems and uh, our needs, uh, uh, the main question arose here concerning this uh, point, yeah, this context. And when we, no, not only, 
Uh, and uh, the specificity of our university, another uh, point here, we know that the specificity of our university is to um, make uh, like English language teachers and English language trainers. And uh, another question here is, um, we wanted to speak about the correspondence of uh, language materials used in Armenia, yeah? uh, the correspondence of it to CFER. Uh, because when we actually make tests later, uh, the content cannot be usually uh, based on like testing material. Yeah? How can we uh, find that correspondence? Uh, so actually we spoke about these two points, yeah? First of all, the correspondence and uh, then uh, what alternative ways can you suggest concerning um, uh, theoretical materials, theoretical testing, uh, yeah? Besides it, what other things can you suggest us? Thank you for your consideration. Okay, what about the second part? The second part means the correspondence of the language material to CFER. Uh, how, uh, yes. Does it really correspond to it? Because actually we find some kind of diversity concerning our material that we use here, yes? And what is used in terms of CFER? Okay. Thank you for your consideration. I educational complex. It is called educational complex, but it consists of several schools, uh, beginning from elementary school and ending in high school. And uh, our small group consists of Dusine Yachar, Dura Gandhila, it's me, and Dusine Bush is our teacher from our educational company. And uh, uh, development of informal foreign language education. Uh, we know that uh, according to our curriculum, only two hours is allocated for, the, for teaching foreign languages. It is two hours is not enough. So we must develop uh, informal foreign language education by means of uh, using high technologies and cross-cultural exchange of students and teachers, professional teachers. And uh, creation of new textbooks according to the new standards of teaching foreign languages. Our textbooks uh, do not uh, correspond to our new standards of teaching English and foreign languages. The next thing is that uh, we have uh, descriptors of uh, assessing uh, knowledge of foreign languages, European descriptors. But uh, what I want to mention, we don't have uh, descriptors for school children. For school children, for different stages of education, for, for elementary school, for basic school and high school. I mean not such descriptions as uh, well, I mean detailed descriptions, some in details. Uh, what do you mean, what do we mean by saying range of information or uh, some, we want some, we need such a book detailed descriptions of descriptors. And with this respect, our educational complex together with uh, Yerevan State Linguistic University after Tuso, uh, want to propose a new project for this program, ECM program. Uh, uh, the, the title of the project is Organization of Plurilingual Education in one educational institution with wide usage of high technology. And uh, I will give this, I have, uh, we have written this, uh, the outline of this project is here, it is in English. I will give you, for, it is just for preliminary discussion. You will read it. 
But we have some questions. Uh, uh, shall I ask these questions after this meeting? Or just not? The project is, is based on the working experience of Yerevan Mechitan Sevastati Educational Complex. The ECML 4 medium term program 2012 2015, learning through languages, promoting inclusive plurilingual and intercultural education, has already been implemented at Mechitan Sevastati Educational Complex in some basic points. No, that's why we want to propose the above-mentioned project. Uh, organization of plurilingual education in one educational institution with wide use, usage of high technology. Uh, the an average pupil of our educational complex learns three foreign languages. English, Russian, and the third foreign language. There are some pupils who learn four foreign languages at our school. And our school website um, consists of materials in seven languages, like English, French, uh, German, Arabic, Georgian, our neighboring country. How we, uh, the ECML, help us to form an international team for this project? And uh, some three experts who are very uh, authorized on this uh, on teaching foreign languages using by using uh, high technology. Okay, do the question. First of all, let me thank you, Mr. Martin, for such a hot discussion that you led us to with so much more. You know, every development, this is our vision, starts with challenges. Now we are ready, now in the process of thinking, I was apt to move from one place to the other. Uh, because it was because of our vision. So what is our insight and foresight? This is led us to a statement, which is too simple, but perhaps too inclusive. It is uh, formulated as innovative approaches in language education for preventing disabilities. Yes. Uh, why do I need to tell unite these two issues? It, it needs explanation. Just uh, for a comment. Um, there was a time. I took up uh, the program for disabilities, for preventing, for that's to say, for managing disabilities, which then turned into prevention of disabilities, and then it turned into new community approaches for preventing these disabilities. I can decipher the, the inside, the, the chain, part by part, if there is necessity, but. Inside this project, inside this vision, my colleagues have offered that have made several proposals that I have no right to exclude. This is um, some uh, part particulars, not part, but particulars of this very important particulars of the same vision. They have offered the following particulars, but they are not very much in particular. Test validation assessment. This is what I'm directly quoting. Curricular development, um, new uh, innovative methodology for language education, and multidisciplinary approaches for content and language education. This is also part of it. And in fact, all, to put it in a nutshell, everything is viewed by our group as developmental, communicative projects for, for the staff. That is to say for social cohesion, which we have any That's all. Thank you. For advantage of the chance, I'd like uh, to make an individual proposal. Being a lecturer of ASP, English for Specific Purposes. So, um, 
Uh, it would be very appreciated if in the next medium term program ISEMEN addressed the issues of LSP, uh, particularly in the field of science and uh, technology at the tertiary level. So uh, perhaps uh, they would underline uh, standard settings or uh, uh, various criteria and descriptors which would be very useful for our language teaching environment. Das heißt auch nicht in der Flotte in die Worte. Kratke Sistrata Hunde ist keine. Mensch, hast du das gesagt? Wie wollen? Mir aber ich habe zu Hunde, mir hat es auch gesagt, es gibt die Schadalaga Sende Mare, und dann haben wir noch so eine Frage. Ich habe das nicht gesagt, aber ich habe das nicht gesagt. Ich habe gesagt, dass ich erstmal auf Deutsch ganz kurz ja, diese Präsentieren zurückgehe und dann sage ich das gleich noch vorne. Okay, das werden Sie nicht vergeben haben. Also das erste Problem für uns. Das erste Problem ist die Formulierung von der Formulierung der Zielsetzung. Sie haben das in Ihrem Report also in Ihren Ausführungen das erwähnt. Und das ist ja auch für uns, warum? Äh, wie können wir die Ziele betrachten? Wenn wir die Entwicklung der Person nehmen, betrachten, das ist universal für alle Technik. Im Bereich des Fremdsprachenunterrichts wird das Ziel formuliert, die Entwicklung der kommunikativen Kompetenz. Aber es gibt andere. Her, zum Beispiel Meinungen und anderes herangehen. Was meine ich? Zum Beispiel die, die Entwicklung der Plurilingualen Persönlichkeit. Oder die Entwicklung der Plurilingualen Lehrperson. Dann ist das Ziel die Entwicklung der interkulturellen das ist, als ob es eine einzelne Richtung ist. Äh, dann ist es äh, sozusagen die Entwicklung der Sekundären, also Lernpersonen. Das heißt, auf Russisch heißt es Rasvizia Stavische Lisekavolische. Das ist die Konzeption von Karavogo, Khaleva und Lenin. Für uns ist es wichtig, dass alle Aspekte zu integrieren. Wir können diese Ziele nicht isoliert betrachten. Das ist das ein Problem. Ich meine, wir schaut gar das immer, aber ich bin nach Hause. Das ist, was uns mal noch was anderes ist, das sind die Warum. Warum machen wir nur das jetzt auch, denn wir sind warum. Reportum. Ha, in Kassetz, wo ich schaut keine Wolle, aber ich habe keine Zeit mehr. Ich habe das sehr gut gemacht. Ich habe das nicht mehr zu tun, aber ich habe das nicht mehr zu tun. Ich habe das an sich sagen lassen. Da habe ich das auch nicht mehr zu tun, aber ich habe das nicht mehr zu tun. 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 Zagadzner, Hauptfahrzeuger, das war gerade in der Zagadzner. Da ist dann nicht auch, was ich so nicht sehe. Naiv, naiv. Mein Kollege ist ein bisschen besser geht. Zagadzner, jeder Ruf tag an uns, als sind wir hier, wie was man so an uns. Jeder Ruf des Sagadzner, Zagadzner, mit dem Schaltein, in der Zagadzner. Und man merkt, dass er wieder integriert, der Programm war das in der Zagadzner. Ich wollte nur zu Wort, 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 zu Wort. Das ist wieder das Problem der Integration. Subject Classroom, das bedeutet, alles wird isoliert unterrichtet. Natürlich, das wird ein bisschen verbunden mit dem Klimaprojekt. Aber hier, das ist das wichtigste Niveau der unterrichtenden Fächer. Und wir haben es nicht bis zu Ende rausgehakt. Subject-Besserung. Vielleicht werden Sie in ein paar Worten, ja, und Sätze erklären. 
Rosy también muere. Y muere en base. Y siempre también muere. Pero tiene que ser el trabajo. Y eso es 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 so wie auch zum Beispiel der Haupt, also das Hauptgewicht fällt auf das Niveau der äh, Muttersprache. Das heißt, äh, Languages of Schooling, Languages in Education, Communication, Languages across Curricula. Die Qualität, ich muss sagen, meistens und, äh, keine Qualität. Äh, Geschweige denn diese Kommunikationsfähigkeiten, die auch manchmal in der Muttersprache fehlen. Es ist nicht nur linguistische Kompetenz, es ist auch äh, die sogenannten Language Activities, soziokulturelle und andere. Vielen Dank. I don't see any more reporting required, so here are my first reactions. Uh, I will take them probably in the order I have them here, or maybe it's a sort of hierarchy. Uh, I think a very important question was put here, how do we find partners when we seem to be having ideas, and, but we would need to have uh, others from other countries to put together a proposal. I would suggest the following, you send us a concept, and we will see whom to contact you to, so that then you can get together and find a team together, if you find interested partners. There is no guarantee that, that you find them, but we would know where to direct you to, to further develop this idea and put together a team before you make a proposal. But you need to send us something very quickly so that we can uh, start uh, networking on your behalf. This is an important uh, thing. Uh, in, in terms of uh, further explanations required, subject classroom uh, that was uh, addressed now. Yes, I think this is exactly what we mean. We have heard from our partners, stakeholders, member states, that there seems to be this problem that the schools in Europe are not really addressing. The, the, the problem that pupils, learners, seem to be not uh, properly equipped with their language of instruction to be educated uh, at school. And uh, we have been told that maybe some kind of a, I don't know, revolution is not a word I personally admire too much for all sorts of reasons. So do we. But uh, I imagine you, <laughs> it's your case as well. But a, a, a major change in, in uh, uh, approaching this. Well, <laughs> I think it's still, uh, the, the problem is related to this still, uh, to this agreement that is not written but it's, it's there. Uh, school expects that learners come to school equipped yeah. from home. Mm -hmm. That they bring in not just the communicative skills, sometimes called, you, you may have heard of this uh, uh, division uh, proposed by Jim Cummings, uh, uh, that, that is uh, differentiating be between what he calls BICS, which is basic interpersonal uh, communicative skill, basic and interpersonal communicative skill, that is covering all the needs, you know, in the private sphere. And the cognitive academic language proficiency that is required for education. For some reason, uh, the, the school is expecting, the schools are expecting that learners come equipped with both this basic interpersonal communicative skill, but also beginnings of academic uh, cognitive language proficiency that is allowing them to uh, uh, enter the educational systems. Yes, the school is. Uh, developing this kind of skill to a certain extent, but apparently not to the level that really allows for the educational processes to take place as if nothing happened. 
And in this, we mean that with the area of subject classroom, an area has been identified, and we expect proposals if people get interested in developing some guidelines, some references, some descriptors even, that would allow the school even to have a check now and then. Are our pupils, learners, equipped with this kind of skill so that we, there's a guarantee that we educate them in all subjects the way we want? Or is additional support required? Because it's not just a matter of, of you know, this classical, the classical uh, 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 stage by stage development that pupils uh, uh, they first go to a kindergarten, then they go to primary, secondary, and all the time their linguistic capacity is being looked after in a coherent way so that this is ensured. Not necessarily is that the case. Now with this new mobility, many pupils <coughs> learners enter the system at some stage. They come from different contexts. They come from different families. <coughs> uh, some people uh, now complain very much. Young pe people don't read books because there are no books in their homes. If you visit homes, there's even the statistics, there are no books at home. And, the, and this is why uh, I'm told then you cannot expect this cognitive academic language skill from, uh, from the learners because how should they have developed it? Uh, they don't read, they don't write, I'm told. I don't believe this. Uh, when I see my uh, young uh, children that are capable of handling three or four different channels of communication at the same time, being on Facebook, being on a mobile phone, uh, texting at the same time, uh, watching television, meaning reading or, or understanding, this is amazing. This is an amazing skill. But this is not what the school is maybe taking into consideration, exploring, using, and developing further in such a way that it serves the purpose of education. Maybe the school needs to reconsider. This is this little revolutionary aspect that I, I am uh, uh, seeing here. But this is not for us to say. This is for you to indicate areas where you would uh, know how to go about this and what projects might be developed, what support, <laughs> what awareness raising uh, campaigns. I think it's simplistic to say they must read Dostoevsky. <coughs> and if they read Shakespeare, Dostoevsky, I don't know, Ego and Goethe, no problem, they will develop as, as they should. I think a young person has the right to ask this stupid but valid question. Why should I? Why should I nowadays, 2011, read Shakespeare, an old guy long dead? What's the purpose? What's the benefit for me? If you don't find an answer for this very valid question, you're in trouble. If we don't provide them with an answer, why should they tell an objective from another not just shut up, you have to, you will understand later on. That doesn't work anymore. They have to know why should they know how to tell an advert from an objective and why should they read Shakespeare or Goethe for that matter, or Mitzkevich, same story. And Mitzkevich is still okay, Slovatsky is worse in this respect. So I think this is what we want to um, elicit. Uh, in terms of, is there a need for, for some cooperation to address these issues, to assist schools in, in dealing with these matters, not to lose contact with the young people we are serving? Yes, I disagree with the statement that they don't read, they don't write, they are, not, they are illiterate. I think we are speaking of a new kind of literacy that needs to be defined, described, and used for the benefit of education. If we, if we close our eyes and consider, oh yeah, this is no good what they are doing, and that's the end of the story, that, that doesn't solve anything.
we need to find ways to re-establish links between the learners uh, and the school, because my feeling is that we're losing this link from all what I hear uh, from uh, uh, schools and what I see also. The, this is a very famous uh, uh, notion of motivation. Young uh, people seem to be not motivated at school. Well, maybe this is not just their fault. My answer would be, maybe this, there's something to the school as well, that they are not motivated. This is what we indicate maybe we need to address. And language plays a huge role in this, because it's a matter of this new kind of literacy where new language competences are maybe to be defined, explored, supported, so that they know what they're doing and they know that the school is their partner. And not their enemy fighting their habits, fighting their newly developed skills. I should stop preaching now because I get too emotional about this. performance can be without motivation. Each performance without motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no motivation, no performance. That's right. Okay. Uh, relationship to, of materials to the CFR uh, was, was mentioned as, 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 a, as an issue. Uh, they, I think there are ways to, to, to uh, relate the uh, teaching materials. You may wish to refer to, for example, one of our projects. It's called CEF Esteem. Uh, C E R F. It starts like the framework, and, and then it develops. Uh, ways to look at texts and see them in relationship with the levels of the framework, for example. So as to say, oh, this text is suitable for tasks and activities related to this level of the framework. This might be useful because then you can look at your texts in your textbook and relate them uh, properly. Of course, you can try to develop schemes how to relate whole textbooks to the CFR. And rightly so, because all too often publishers simply put some letters on the cover, but they have not investigated this too much. As users, you have right to ask this very fundamental question. How do I know, how do we know that this is a B2 textbook? Yes, yes. If a publisher does not provide any information, any evidence, then it's not a good uh, deal. You find like B2 only yeah. textbook? Yeah, and nothing else. Be sure of yeah, this is a bad habit. This is not, this is just a marketing uh, trick. But we are living in the age of marketing. It's like when they sell you a car. And they tell you it's a Mercedes, but you see it's not. Uh, or uh, they don't provide enough evidence that it's a, it's a good car, you don't buy it. I know that many times you have no choice but to use this or that textbook. But anyway, you have right to ask the publisher, write him a letter, to provide evidence. How do I know that this is a B2 textbook? And the, the, there is no police on the level of the Council of Europe that will uh, investigate the case and punish the publisher, because this is not possible. But you, users, have the right to ask this innocent question, and if there is no proper answer, then the publisher will get the message that uh -huh, people start getting interested in what we mean by these letters. Then we better prepare ourselves then we better do a better job next time. The same goes for examiners, for exams offered to you from providers claiming this is a B2 or C1 exam. You have right to ask before you start using the exam, how do we know? Please give us a source where we find the evidence so that we understand and we can then inform our users, look, this looks like a solid work because they uh, uh, went into it and they checked their relationship with this or that level. If there's no evidence, no good car, I'm afraid. Don't drive it. Don't use it. It's a, it's a, used, car, it's a used car that is claimed to be the new, but it's not. Maybe another thing here. Why? Sometimes, 
there are uh, these uh, A1 or B2, absolutely mechanical, without evidence, without body of evidence, and then All right, this is the subject for our afternoon session, where validity will be an issue. Because validity is just about that. Is this a valid statement that on the cover? Is this a valid statement that you tell me this is B2 this is or this is C1? If it is, provide me with evidence. If you don't provide me with evidence, sorry, I don't buy it because I don't see how it relates. <laughs> there is a question about uh, the ICT-based assessment and alternative ways of, of assessment. This is a, long, a huge story, and of course, this is like with assessment in general, uh, and uh, this is subject for the afternoon session as well. The, the first question that you have to, to ask yourself when applying this or that assessment is, what is the purpose? What do we want to achieve with this assessment? And then, is this the best way to, to achieve what we want to achieve? And then you, you need to look for ways. There are lots of different ways of assessment that fit they read this purpose better than the other. And again, you have the right to ask, I suppose, why is it a valid uh, an assessment scheme in our case? Again, related. Is it enough, or should we think of supplementing, developing, and further looking for additional ways? And I cannot tell you that this is better than that, because it all depends on your purpose, yeah. on, on uh, the your target group, on what really do we want with this, uh, that we do this at all, that we spend time and money and, and run it. What do we achieve? Is this what we wanted to achieve? Is this uh, fitting our overarching objective? That's, that's an important question. Descriptors for young learners needed. Well, there are lots of descriptors uh, uh, you may know them uh, uh, for young learners because the framework descriptors were rather developed uh, with a view on 15, 16 year old. But uh, in the, uh, around the European language portfolio, descriptors for younger learners have been developed and they are available uh, on the website of the European language portfolio. A whole collection of descriptors adopted for younger learners, for children. Because certainly you cannot uh, deal with the CFR descriptors when you go to kindergarten or uh, first grade of the primary. You can't use them. But they have been adopted for these ages. Plus, always think in these terms. Don't wait until descriptors be developed by somebody else. Start developing them in your, in your own way and uh, look for ways to validate them. And then you have best collection that fit, fits your purpose best. With reference to the others, the link can be established later on. You don't need to start with the link. You need to start with your needs, your learners, your context. And use only the categories, because that will then make it easier to link up later on. Teaching academic subjects in foreign languages. Well, surely uh, any uh, uh, approach related to CLIL, uh, content and language integrated learning, I personally <coughs> consider very useful. Uh, although it's not just a matter of delivering a lecture in English or, or German, it's a matter of really doing it in such a way that both content and language are supported. So that the lecturer pays attention to the linguistic means as much as to the content. We have currently five projects related to CLIM, and you may wish you to benefit from what they are developing. Some of them are at the starting point, or offered for those that intend to start. Uh, some of them are intended for those that already are using some uh, CLIM uh, 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 approaches, uh, and, and support them in this. Using technology in language teaching, it's a vast area. Uh, we are currently having two uh, projects related to this. One is uh, currently uh, just finished their workshop yesterday. Uh, and and Armenia was represented, so you may wish, I don't have the name with me, 
that uh, I, uh, I think it was a lady that uh, participated in this uh, project called, uh, the, the aim of the project is to support teachers in using modern technology in language teaching wisely. Wisely. Confidently, but wisely. Don't overkill, but use it, because you know what? They are using it already. The learners. So why not, uh, uh, maybe with a little effort, learn uh, yourself and include this in your, uh, in your uh, collection of, of uh, 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 I, I should not say weapons, but uh, uh, instruments. <coughs> New textbooks are needed because the old ones are old standard. Develop them. <laughs> Start developing them. I myself, uh, I, I'm quite an experienced uh, textbook developer, and I know how it starts, and I'm sure that this is the case of many of you teaching. You have your textbook from the publisher, and you have your second textbook in your drawer, because this is how it works. When we start working with a textbook, we develop a, an additional textbook to accompany it, because otherwise it would not fit your exact purpose. I don't believe in textbooks solving problems, because in the end, I would rather rely on my own textbook, because I know best what my learners are need, in need of, how to go about them, how to motivate them, what text to choose, what activities to prefer. Yes, using a textbook from a publisher is a nice guide, and when learners see the progress that we covered, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, we're moving forward, then they have this very nice feeling. But I don't believe this can really be a remedy for all your problems, a tool that is uh, responding to all your needs. How could it be possible? Imagine someone sitting, I don't know where, producing a textbook, good for all over the world? I don't believe in this. So I'm sure that you have your own textbooks. Sure. That, that okay. You should. Yes. And then, uh, well, publishing or not publishing, I don't know, sharing them, or maybe now and then meeting uh, in order to see what we've got, maybe we put it together to a, some kind of a reader for the next generation, for the next class. Because we know this works, or this doesn't. So we don't have to suffer the same syndrome each time that we go uh, uh, with the textbook and it tell our learners that we don't do this because you know this is not exactly uh, for us and this is probably something more useful would be to do this. I, I'm open on this. That uh, the best textbooks that we may have are those that we are we keep producing uh, on, in a, on an ongoing basis. And nowadays, with with uh, technology support, we uh, no longer uh, need to wait until a publisher publishes a book that is exactly corresponding to our needs. There's no such textbook. Uh, at least I haven't found. Uh, those, except for those that I have produced myself, of course. Integration for, for, uh, from, uh, of subjects have been covered. The uh, interesting issue of what are we teaching? Communicative competence or more? Intercultural competence or more? Plurilingualism or more? Yes, I support the integrative uh, approach to it. I'm sure that we cannot uh, uh, start believing that if, if we only cover the skills as defined, the thing is done. Thank you. Because it's so fascinating to, to work with language that is offering, through these skills, offering new views on, on, on the world. It would be a waste of resources not to attach uh, intercultural competences, social competences, social cultural competences. You may even think of including Shakespeare. Now and then, if you find a reason for that. Okay, uh, uh, this is, I think we are already well over time, but I think it was worth it. Uh, and I suggest that we stop here. Thank you very much for your uh, 
for this discussion. It's very interesting for me, uh, of course, in order to uh, uh, shape the next meeting of the program. I hope it was useful for you as well. I invite you for the afternoon if you're still interested in testing and assessment. Thank you.